Welcome to sermons from St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Minot, North Dakota. St. Paul's is anchored in the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and for the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, He asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at his knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. My friends, over and over and over again, when people of the Bible encountered angels, their immediate response was not excitement and joy, but fear and awe. Contrary to how angels are displayed in our culture, they are not cuddly little babies or feminine angelic fairies. Instead, angels are sacred warriors and messengers of God. They are spiritual beings that are referred to in the masculine pronouns and masculine names. They are holy and mighty and possess superhuman strength. And so it makes sense that when biblical people encountered angels, they reacted in fear. It makes sense that angels typically said to mankind, Do not fear. Because, well, mankind is frightened by that which is holy and mighty and strong. You see, dear friends, fear sets in. Yes, fear sets in for you and I. Typically, when we come into contact with things that are holier and bigger and mightier and more powerful than us. For example, remember the shepherds. Yes, those shepherds at that first advent, that Christmas story. The shepherds at Bethlehem. They were fearful when the angels appeared to them. And then we can recall on Easter, the women were fearful when they came to the empty tomb and found angels. And in today's reading, today's reading from the Gospel of Luke, that same fear and awe took hold of Peter and his fellow companions when they were before not angels, but before Jesus. Now, it may strike you and me as being a bit odd to be fearful of Jesus. However, this was very appropriate. I repeat, it was very appropriate. An appropriate response for Peter and the disciples that day when they were fishing. That day, after Jesus' teaching, Jesus told the disciples to throw in their nets into the water. Long story short, after a whole night of not catching any fish at all, 
Well, they listened to Jesus, and they caught so many fish that day that the nets began to break. Even the boat. Yes, not one boat, but two boats began to sink from that massive weight of fish. Now, my friends, do not look over this too quickly. While it is indeed amazing that this great catch caused the boats to sink, what is even more amazing is that the fish were caught immediately because Jesus made it so. This was a miracle. It was not Jesus showing he was a superb fisherman, knowing the location of a perhaps good honey hole, as they say, a good fishing honey hole, but that Jesus had authority and power. Authority and power not only over the water, but over fish as well. As an experienced fisherman, Peter realized what had just happened. He realized that Jesus exercised authority over the water and over the fish to create a catch of a lifetime. No, we should not say that. It was an out-of-the-world, out-of-this-world type impossible catch. Peter had never experienced anything like this in his entire lifetime as a fisherman. And as a result, Peter, yes, he fell at Jesus' knees, saying, get away from me. Get away from me. I, I am a sinner. I cannot handle this holiness. Just leave me to myself. As already mentioned, Peter's fearful response to Jesus was quite appropriate. It was appropriate because Jesus is not just another fishing buddy in the boat who caught a whopper. Indeed, Jesus, we must keep in mind, is not just a fishing buddy in a boat running the trolling motor while tossing you a beer and saying, I heard this joke down at the diner the other day. You want to hear it? No, my friends. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. He is the God-man In Christ, in him, all things in heaven and all things on earth were created. He has authority over life. He has authority over death. He has authority over sin and the devil. And yes, even fish. Therefore, he should be feared. But there's a catch, isn't there? We don't like to fear Christ, do we? We especially resist this fear of God in America because we like to keep our Christianity, well, we like to keep it casual and informal. Besides, we might say to ourselves, in our reading from the Gospel, Luke, Jesus told Peter to fear not, right? But my friends, this is where we must be extremely careful. You see, when Jesus tells Peter not to fear, He's not telling Peter to relax and become casual. In other words, when Jesus saw Peter on his knees, crying out in fear and repentance of his sins, Jesus doesn't look at Peter and say this, You know, Peter, do not fear, for I'm going to put my holiness and majesty away. Apparently, I have upset you with too much majesty and too much holiness. Do not fear, Peter. My bad. Sorry that I displayed too much power and too much divinity for you to handle. I will chill out. I will pull the throttle back on the divinity. And I'll be a little more casual from this point forward. So you do not have to be frightened, Peter. My dear friends, Jesus did not, obviously did not do any of this. But instead, he addresses Peter personally and comforts him with gracious forgiveness, comfort, and help. The point is this. The point that is being made is that we American Christians dislike the idea of having something controlling over top of us. You and I, we all like to feel as if we are masters and commanders of our own tiny universes. We like to be free to choose and do whatever we want. We do not like to feel small and out of control because that creates fear. And so we try to diminish. We try to diminish the holiness and the majesty and the divine power of Christ by striving to be informal and casual. In our minds, informal and casual are good. 
They make things manageable and comforting. Informal and casual, they offset fear, at least in our minds. And nobody likes how uncomfortable fear can be. You see, we see this everywhere in the American church. And we are guilty of it as well ourselves. The pastor in the pulpit with a Hawaiian shirt instead of an alb and a chasuble of investments, chasuble vestments, casual. Church architecture that avoids high vaulted ceilings and long rows of pews, but embraces a low ceiling and wide rows of theater seating, well, informal. Church music that sounds like a pop love song instead of a majestic symphony, comfortable. And cartoon graphics and mushy fonts in church publications, squishy at best. Frankly stated, mark this, we are often more afraid of being fearful of God than godly fear itself. One more time. We are often more afraid of being fearful of God than godly fear itself. You see, it was completely appropriate for Peter to be fearful of Jesus. And my friends, you and I should be as well. Yes, we should be too. It is good to have fear of God because we are not God. We are not all-knowing. We are not all-present. We are not all-powerful. We do not have the power to create or sustain or redeem life itself. All that we do is, get this frankly stated, is that we die. All that we do is die while attempting to muddle through this life with our futile attempts of so-called greatness. But did not Jesus say to Peter, fear not? Again, did he not say fear not? Yes, he did. He did this to meet Peter's fear with forgiveness and comfort and help. He did this to grant Peter faith. Baptized saints, listen very carefully. There is a fear of God without faith, and there is a fear of God with faith. Faith is what makes the difference. Both Judas, consider both Judas and Peter, they both denied Jesus. However, Judas's fear led him to death, and Peter's fear led him to Christ. In the Old, Old Testament, we see this as well. Both Saul and David, they both had fear, but only David was a man after God's own heart. So what this means for you today is that you shall fear God. Yes, you shall fear God, but your fear should not be absent of faith. You are not Judas. You are the baptized. You've been absolved of your sins. The promises of God are yours. They have been poured into your ears and into your minds, which means that you have forgiveness and life and salvation in Christ. And with Christ... Faith, yes, you have faith that makes the Lord's terror endurable. Perhaps we could summarize all of this into one simple word, and that word is reverence. Yes, reverence. You see, reverence is not something that is dead and without the Spirit. But instead, reverence is a holy fear clothed in faith. Reverence is a holy fear clothed in faith. Simply stated, reverence, it acknowledges that the Lord is holy, that we are sinners, and that the Lord, he forgives sinners such as us, such as you and me. And so reverence prevents you from pompously walking before the Lord while chewing gum, making Jesus into your buddy and good old pal. And at the same time, reverence understands the promises of God, which means that you can boldly approach the throne of grace because of Jesus' sacrificial death on your behalf and for you. Reverence acknowledges pain and awe and fear and mystery and faith and promises and hope. 
Reverence does not try to omit things that would make us fearful of God. And reverence does not lead us only in fear of God. Instead, reverence is a holy respect before the Lord's power and majesty and might. Reverence leaves us with astonishment and awe and silent faith filled gratitude, knowing that the God of the universe, who could have destroyed you and me for our sin, chose to redeem us, to redeem us unto eternal life because of a sheer gift and love for us. And so reverence is truly present when Jesus' words are poured into your ears, his promises given to you. Reverence occurs and happens with his holy meal as the body and blood are laid upon your hands and upon your tongues and into your bellies for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Reverence happens as his water splashes upon your head as you are marked as one of the redeemed when the Lord invites you to him and him to you to free you from all that would destroy you. Reverence. And so it is only out of this context of reverence that you and I live by faith, not by sight, and get this, certainly not by our feelings. In reverence, you are neither seized by fear nor absent from fear, but centered in a holy fear, clothed in faith. Yes, faith that has worked in you, this mighty and Living and busy and active faith. Faith that confesses sin. Faith that acknowledges the holiness of God. And faith that receives Christ in all of his gifts for us. Faith that gives way to bold confession of who Christ is for us. In the name of the reverent Christ, the one we receive from, the one we're centered in. Amen. Thy strong word bespeaks us righteous, bright with thine own holiness. Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormatrichard.org or visit St. Paul's website at www.stpaulsminot.org. The Lord bless and keep you.